Back in March 2020, we posted a video about Terrence Howard's love life. To our surprise, the video went viral and has now surpassed 1.5 million views on YouTube. Thank you, besties. Since the video was created with our classier format, we decided to give it a little update, complete with messy ad-libs and karaoke sessions to go right along with this tomfoolery. Uh-oh, girl, let me get ready. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Of course, if you prefer our previous format, then you're more than welcome to watch the old video, which we've linked in our description box. But for the rest of y'all, are you ready to jump into this hot, stinking mess? Will Cardi B forgive Offset? Do chitlin' stink? Hell yeah, I'm ready. Well, before we jump into it, don't forget to head on over to rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, blue raspberry licorice, RRG coffee mugs, and butter toffee peanuts. Pass me some of them peanuts, girl. To understand his views on relationships, we have to take you all the way back to 1968. 16-year-old Anita Howard found out she was expecting her second child with her husband, 18-year-old Tyrone Howard. Anita decided she wasn't wasn't ready for another baby, so her brother agreed to take her to an abortion clinic. They stopped at a red light, and Anita had a change of heart. She told her brother, no, this would not be happening if he wasn't meant to be here. She gave birth to Terrence Deshaun Howard on March 11, 1969, in Chicago. A damn Pisces. I knew it. I knew it. He told Rolling Stone magazine that his skin was so yellow when he was born. Yellow bone, that's what he wants. <laughs> Doctors thought he had jaundice, so they took him to a dark room and left him there for three days. Terrence believes that this is where things went wrong for him. He said, No contact with mom inside an incubator inside a dark room the first three days of my life. The hell he talking about? There's a 0% chance Terrence even remembers being in an incubator after he was born. But anyway, moving right along... In 1971, two-year-old Terrence and his family were at a department store to see Santa Claus. A 36-year-old man named Jack Fitzpatrick was also there with his four children and his pregnant wife. According to Page Six, an argument broke out between Terrence's dad and the other man about who was next in line. The New York Times wrote in a 1971 article, Mr. Howard began to curse using the obscenities that are part of the language of the ghetto. The ghetto? Words still inexcusable to an older man with his children. And the white told the black not to use such language before the children. Terrence's mom told investigators, He tried to kill my husband. He kicked my husband several times in the groin. He had murder in his eyes. Terrence's dad, who was 21 at the time, was accused of stabbing the man, ultimately taking his life. The man's bodily fluids were left splattered on Terrence's jacket. According to the New York Times, the weapon was never found. Terrence's parents were arrested, but his mom was later released and his dad was charged with second-degree murder. He insisted he acted in self-defense and was ultimately found guilty of manslaughter. He spent 11 months behind bars. NPR revealed the Howard family fell into poverty after his dad was locked up, and when he returned home, Terrence said his dad was a completely different person. His dad began telling him the importance of standing up for himself. His dad used to tell him, Never take the vertebrae out of your back or the base out of your throat. I ain't raising sheep. I raised men. Stay a man. His parents got divorced, and his mom moved to L.A. to try to make it as an actress. Terrence split his time between L.A. with his mom and in Cleveland with his dad. Now, looking back at the formative years of his life, there's a lot to unpack. Terrence was born to teenage parents. He witnessed his dad take another man's life. His dad was sent to prison. His dad completely changed once he returned home, and his parents got divorced. Someone call a psychiatrist expeditiously. He told the New York Times his dad and uncles were pimps and he learned a lot from them. He said, they taught me to open women up, but I leave scars. <sighs> he later clarified to Elle magazine that they were, quote, pimps in the figurative sense. He said the men in his family also taught him the most important advice. Whoever has the least interest in the relationship holds all the power. I know that's right. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Terrence said that in school he was teased for his skin color and for being a pretty boy, and things at home weren't any better. According to the New York Times, he emancipated himself from his family at the age of 16. Two years later, he moved to New York and landed a role on The Cosby Show. Terrence told the New York Times, I conned the casting lady to let me audition, and she gave me the part, but they cut me out of the show. I was angry. That's what he get. 
He didn't have to con women in the dating world, though. However, some people believe his superiority complex ruined his chances of having a healthy relationship. An anonymous source told the New York Post, he thinks he is truly God's gift to women and he expects subservience. I bet you expect this foot up your ass, Terrence. <laughs> How about that? At the age of 21, he married a woman named Lori McComas. They had three children, and in 1995, they moved to Los Angeles so Terrence could land more acting gigs. Eventually, they separated because Terrence was having a hard time keeping his yellow dangalang in his pants. He told Rolling Stone he went to see a therapist and was eventually diagnosed with intimacy addiction. Child, please, if you a cheater, just say you a cheater. If you's a hoe, say you's a hoe. Huh. Oh. As his marriage fell apart, he told the New York Times he was ready to quit the entertainment business and even contemplated ending his life. The one thing that saved him was when he landed his breakout role in the 1999 film The Best Man. Girl, let me add that to my holiday playlist. That's a good-ass movie, girl. His career was finally headed in the right direction, but his marriage to Lori was a hot, stinking nightmare. In 2001, she hung up on him during a heated telephone conversation. In response, Terrence went to her house, broke the front door, ran through the screen door, grabbed her arm, and reportedly hit her in the face twice. He sound crazy as hell. He and Lori divorced in 2003. They got married in 2005, only to divorce again in 2007 after Lori said, I gotta put me first, Lucius. <laughs> she reconnected with her high school sweetheart and left Terrence in the dust. Bye, Ashy. Terrence was back on the market. Perhaps he wasn't looking for love, but he was open to meeting new people. He told Essence Magazine he tried to spit game to Halle Berry and Gabrielle Union, but neither of them called him back. They probably saw the red flags. For the ladies who gave him the time of day, Terrence had some very strict requirements. He told Elle Magazine he liked women who looked like him and shared his physical features. Now say what now? Girl, I'm confused. So this ninja in love with himself. He also claimed that intimacy had been detrimental to him in the past, so he was abstaining from all boot-knocking activities. He said his new rule allowed him to date three or four women at a time without getting too attached. However, some of the women would push him to take things further. He said, afterward, I would feel unclean like I'd compromised my own values. Ninja, what values? Got no damn values. Another strict requirement had to do with personal hygiene. He told Elle magazine he expected to see baby wipes in every woman's bathroom. He added, And if she doesn't make the adjustment to baby wipes, I'll know she's not completely clean. Ninja, like we know you not completely sane, okay? His dating life had to take a back seat in 2008 when his mom was diagnosed with colon cancer. She passed away that same year at the age of 56, and he told the Entertainment Industry Foundation, you never really know how important somebody is until they're not there anymore. On an unknown date, Terrence began dating a woman named Michelle Ghent. The New York Daily News reported that in 2009, he told Michelle he wanted to end his life, and he pretended to swallow a handful of Valtrex, a medication used to treat herpes. Now say what now? Terrence recalled the event and said he only did it because he wanted to break up with Michelle. Okay, but well we gonna circle back around to the prescription or no? We ain't gonna talk about it. Okay, girl. Nonetheless, they eventually got engaged. Terrence admitted he cheated on her with multiple women throughout their engagement because he didn't think he and Michelle were compatible in the bedroom. Does that make him crazy? Does that make him crazy? Does, Does that, that make him crazy? Possibly. <laughs> this ninja. Deep down inside, Terrence wanted to become a better man. Did he though? According to the New York Daily News, he was a Jehovah's Witness at the time, and being monogamous and applying the principles of the Bible were extremely important to him. So he and Michelle secretly got married in January 2010. Michelle said a week after tying the knot, Terrence laid hands on her. This ninja. But that's not all. Terrence later admitted he and Michelle experimented with different substances because being under the influence was the only time they were ever happy. A year after they got married, they separated, and in February 2011, she filed for divorce. Michelle threatened to leak damaging info about Terrence to the public. In response, the Chicago Tribune reported that Terrence paid her $40,000 in hush money in addition to a spousal support settlement 
settlement. Lol, this is messy. In December 2011, E! News reported that Michelle was granted a restraining order after she claimed Terrence threatened to take her life. Weeks later, Terrence filed a restraining order of his own, claiming Michelle didn't like black people. <laughs> <laughs> and he accused her of still trying to extort him with the juicy information she was in possession of. How much information did Michelle have? Well, like 21 Savage said, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> According to People Magazine, Michelle had phone recordings of Terrence having naughty conversations with other women. She also had text messages and emails from Terrence that exposed his alleged substance issue, infidelities, their three-way action, and a video of him dancing in his birthday suit. Nobody want to see that mess. The final bombshell was Terrence admitting he paid Michelle the $40,000 in hush money to keep her from exposing his herpes diagnosis to the public. Look like she owe him a refund then. When Michelle's lawyer asked Terrence if he gave Michelle the STD, Terrence answered, yes I did, or she gave it to me. Well, which one is it, Terrence? A judge later ruled in Terrence's favor and reversed the divorce settlement. Michelle kept him in and out of court for years, and in a later hearing, the actor was ordered to pay her $1.3 million in past due spousal support. Got him! He and Michelle attempted to reconcile in July 2013 by taking a trip to Costa Rica. But while there, Terrence allegedly put his hands on her inside their vacation home. Michelle pepper sprayed him in defense. I know that's right, girl. She was ready for his black ass this time. And upon returning to Los Angeles, she was granted yet another restraining order. Toxic as hell. Terrence was back on the prowl. After appearing in the 2013 movie The Butler, he discussed his love scene with his co-star Oprah Winfrey by saying, To be able to make out with Oprah, to have, op to have love scenes with her and those tiggo biddies, I mean, um... <laughs> <laughs> In late 2013, he went to an L.A. restaurant and spotted a woman having lunch with a man. Terrence walked up to the man and said, I don't know if she's your wife or girlfriend, but she's absolutely stunning. The woman was Miranda Pack, and the man was her old boss. Miranda told Terrence he was very bold to approach them, and Terrence responded, Well, only a tiger can approach a tiger. What in the jungle fever? According to Rolling Stone, they got married three weeks later. This gonna be messy, ain't it? He must have a dangling of gold. <laughs> Unfortunately for Miranda, Terrence was still stuck in the past. The New York Daily News reported he was still in contact with his ex-wife, Michelle Gent. The lady that had the restraining order against him. And he told Michelle he was ready to dump Miranda if Michelle would take him back. This ninja. In mid-2014, he and Miranda separated, and she filed for divorce in 2015, citing irreconcilable differences. They kissed and made up around the time Terrence landed his role on the show Empire. Secure the bag, girl. Secure the bag. In June 2015, he and Miranda welcomed their first son. Miranda told Rolling Stone they had an amazing connection, but she knew Terrence wasn't perfect. She said he didn't cook, didn't do dishes, and he didn't lift a finger around the house. Honey, that's a child, not a husband. She called him selfish before jokingly saying, I probably leave him 30 times a month. Make it 31, girl. If that didn't raise enough eyebrows, Miranda said that after two years of marriage, they had only gone out to restaurants about two or three times. I know you motherfucking lying. They never went grocery shopping together, never went to the movies, and she never even received a gift from him. Oh, hey. In addition, she said Terrence spent all of his free time creating plastic shapes and three-dimensional building blocks tied together by a copper wire. Oh yeah, that's right. He's trying to open the flower to life. Y'all remember that? Terrence confirmed they worked on the pieces together for about 17 hours every day. Girl, if you don't get your ass about that marriage. Even though he was making a decent paycheck on Empire, he told Rolling Stone his checks were garnished by his ex-wife Michelle to cover her spousal support payments. Terrence revealed Miranda was the one paying the rent on their Chicago apartment, but they had plans to buy a house in the San Fernando Valley after he got his spousal support situation squared away. Mm-hmm. Like they say they gonna pay you back when they tax return come in. <laughs> now this is what happens when securing the bag goes terribly wrong. According to People Magazine, he and Miranda quietly divorced in July 2015. Good for you, Miranda. However, the friendly exes walked the red carpet at the Emmys just two months after the divorce was finalized. Oh, hell 
no. Baby Miranda decided to spin the block and got pregnant with their second son, who was born in August 2016, making Terrence a father of five. And then in December 2018, Terrence re-proposed to her with a seven-carat diamond engagement ring. And she said yes. Girl, take that diamond and run, honey. This will be the second time Terrence has remarried an ex-wife. We're unsure if they've taken their second walk down the aisle as of this video. If after listening to this hot, stankin' mess, you think Terrence might be a little cray-cray, he would probably agree with you. He told Rolling Stone, the sooner people declare me insane, the sooner I'll be free. Okay, Ninja. Your wish is our command. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, let us know your thoughts down below. And thanks for watching RRG.